morning everybody and welcome back to my allotment. Believe it or not, it's actually the 2nd of April already and I'm still in a woolly hat. But lots been happening, it is starting to warm up, um, it's very wet but hopefully, fingers crossed, the next week should be a bit drier for us. So I thought I'd give you another tour around both plots so you can see what change has been happening over the last sort of month. Um, quite a few. We have made some progress, so I'll take you around and uh, sh give you a look. So Polytunnel 1 is sort of become seed sowing central. This is, I've got two polytunnels. I'll show you the update with the second one. Um, but this one is still sort of very much my seed sowing, propagation, growing space in here. So I'll um, yeah, show you what we've got happening. So for years now, I've grown my potatoes in pots, and that is because I have wireworm on this plot. Um, I don't know about plot two, but actually growing in pots works for me. I'm going to stick with it. So in here are my first earlies and my earlies. My second early, sorry. Um, we've got Swift and Charlotte. Now I follow um, sort of very basic rules when I sort of grow my potatoes in pots. For anything that's sort of a new potato, so all of these, I do two potato tubers per pot. My main crop, which I'm growing Cara this year, they're not in yet, they'll probably go in maybe even next weekend. Them I tend to do just one potato per pot. And I find that works for me, I get a reasonably good harvest, I get enough potatoes for me, I don't go mad on them. Um, and I just find it's, I don't have the issue with wireworm. I also don't have the problem of sticking the fork through them when I dig them up and I also don't get volunteer potatoes which you know when you miss that tiny little potato somewhere and next year they sprout up um, so yeah that's not an issue when you grow them in pots as well so it works for me lots of people don't like it but um, if you have any difficulties with them try top try pots so the police on here is just on standby in case we get a uh, frost I'm not too worried at the moment because obviously they're not up but if they're up and we get a slightly later frost, then I will um, just lay the fleece over them. But I do keep them in the polytunnel for the risk of frost has passed. Down at the bottom here, we've got our, my samphire, which is just self-seeded from last year. But that's coming back really well. And then I've got um, stocks and uh, gypsophilia. Living under here are my asters and my achillea. These are all for plot two. Then I've got some cornflowers which are actually spare, some onions and some shallots that are actually going down to my mum's. Then up here I've got some, um, they're just some more onions, but I've got some um, straw flowers and some nigella. Then over on um, these sorts of trays, these uh, shelving units here, these are some herbs, some parsley and some dill. Not a lot of action going on there at the moment. Then we've got some um, celeriac and some cauliflower. Just some more leftover flower seedlings. I've got some delphiniums, some skate and some scabious and a random hollyhock. And then I've got lettuces. Um, this is kohlrabi with an interloper. Don't know what happened there some snapdragons which really just don't seem to do anything they're just the slowest growing flower I think in the world some more scabious more lettuce um, some cabbage so most of this stuff in the sort of green trays is actually destined to go down to my mum's then under here we have got um, spring onions and beetroot just germinating. They probably need the lid off them to be honest. But well, actually we're going to get frost tonight so I'll leave that on. She says. Um, and here we've got some chard, some leeks and some spinach. More leeks, more spring onions and in the end there we've got oregano, brussels sprouts and some spinach. I'm plodding away in my little Ikea grow house thing. I don't know what half these things are. We've got some flocks. These are all my dahlia tubers, which have now been potted up. So there's not hundreds of those, but just a, a few to keep me going. And then under here, we've got some hollyhocks, um, spinach, and 
Status. So yeah, that's all living under cloches at the moment. I've also been doing some work sort of prettying up the polytunnel, so I now have a new curtain which hides all the rubbish underneath. And then, I can't remember if I had this last month, but I'm still slightly obsessed with this. So um, this is my easy to grow tray from Aquapot. So um, it gravity feeds from that tank into this tray and they kind of effectively bottom water themselves. And then another new addition are my hanging herb planters. Outside on plot one there's actually been some planting going out um, which is really exciting to actually be getting um, things finally in the ground. So the broad beans are in and they're doing reasonably well actually they're coming up and then under here is my um, onions grown from seed in there the reason they're under the mesh is because I do have an issue with um, allium leaf miner brassica cage is full of weeds but I'm just avoiding going in there because it's so wet my two surviving cabbages my grass that I have brought the strimmer up to deal with today now I have put some carrots in the bed but they are yet to show themselves but hopefully coming up soon and some parsnips are also in I need to put that back over for tonight because it's going to be frosty my rhubarb now this rhubarb's never done particularly well here and I do question whether I just need to lose it um, but undecided with that one at the moment And then my onion sets have gone in and the herb bed's also starting to sort of wake up. They just need to go. And then I've also um, started building my supports. Now I hate building supports. So I've got the um, pea structure in here with a handful of peas in. And the... Um, Raspberries are starting to come up. So these are my autumn fruiting raspberries. They're the only types of raspberries I grow. They are growing everywhere, so I need to contain those. I've got a few radishes coming up on the end here. So they're all looking okay. And then my garlic also under a mesh. It's taken a bit of a battering over winter but it'll be all right. And then I have also, I grow two types of peas. So I grow the dwarf peas and then I grow a tall type of pea called alderman. And um, this year they are growing on this structure. So not massive changes over on plot one. Now I'm standing somewhere very new. I'm in my new polytunnel. So we managed to get the cover on this um, last week or uh, yeah, earlier this week, I think it was Monday. Um, so yes, it's up. Um, really pleased with it. So I'm excited to get growing in here now. Not a lot's happening at the moment. But um, I'll talk you through the plants. I'm sort of shut in here at the moment. It's very wet in here at the moment because I've put all this um, manure down. I've already had a molehill in here, which is really irritating. But um, the manure is so wet, it's just drying out, making it quite condensated in here. But um, so yeah, we're going to have two beds. Well, we've got we've got a central path up the middle, and then we've got two beds either side. At the back here, there is going to be some more of this over here at the back of this mesh is where I'm going to grow my loofers so my loofers are going to be planted along the back and they will grow up I've got a random bit of trellis there I don't know what's going on with that at the moment um, um, I'm thinking down here I'll just have a few chilli plants and this trellis at the back excuse the broom um, is going to have some yard long beans in there don't know what's going on in that corner yet but over here so this behind me here is my hardy kiwi 
Um, so it grows the small sort of fuzzless type kiwis, sometimes they're called grape kiwis, that you can eat all of, including the skin. So they're supposed to be hardy down to minus 34 degrees C. Hope that's never tested here in the UK. But um, so in theory, it shouldn't have an issue dealing with a few frosts. So the plan is that will grow up um, and along the centre of the polytunnel. Um, doing a lot of research on how to prune and train them at the moment so um, I'm not going to offer too much advice on that as yet but once I've sort of got my head around it I will share with you all. So this backstaging bit is where I'm planning on having my aquapots which I'm going to grow um, cucamelons, um, cape gooseberries, tomatillos, that sort of thing in the aquaplots aqua plots aqua pots um, they are again a gravity fed self watering system it is all about less work so um yeah the, the plan is they'll come in here so out here we are still a little bit of a mess so um around the back's been cleared a little bit i've got a compost bin set up now my plan is to see if i can get some more of those i know someone who's got some so i'm going to see if i can acquire them some more of these grid things to use as compost bins so I can have another one next to it and then I've built this everybody has a messy corner on their allotment well in fact I've probably got four um so the plan is with this screen behind it I behind me I will grow my giant sunflowers up here so they will hide what's going on behind there I'm also going to see if I can get um, a couple of IBC tanks to go down here and fill up from a structure I'll build over the top so that I can get water into that polytunnel using my battery operated pump. Save me uh, lugging water too far. And then um, I have managed to sow my massive meter long carrots in here, but there is no sign of them yet, but we'll give them a chance. And then my willow whips have taken, well most of them look like they've taken. So I've got some, buds coming on them now that one might not have done there actually but um yeah most of them look okay no sign of life in the Jerusalem artichoke yet I've ordered some asparagus to go in here and most of these beds are still empty at the moment apart from that Lumin chive plant, which I keep digging up and it keeps coming back, but um, we will beat it. These are going to be my dahlia beds. I've got raspberry coming up there as well, I need to dig that out. And then in the fruit cage, um, to sort of supplement my strawberry vertical shrub planter I've put this in as well so I'll have some more I need to get one more strawberry plant which I'm hoping I can find someone who's got a runner I can have my gooseberry bush is waking up that's starting to put on some new growth as is my grape however my loganberry is not looking good so we may need to evaluate that Black currants are fine. Blueberry is also putting on some bud. As is the red currant, which for a long time I suspected was dead. Um, this is starting, which now looks like the dead one in here. But yeah, I thought for a long time this was dead, but this is really woken up. It's still in its pot. It's going to stay in its pot now until uh, the winter. Then I'll put it in. And then um, my cornflowers are in, so that's what's growing in along here. So we've got the normal sort of blue ones and then the classic fantastic, which is kind of two shades of blue. My rose, my Coco Loco rose is also waking up and doing well. And my lovely arch. Obviously nothing growing in it yet, but still love it. And we have signs of life from the raspberries. So here I've got all gold and Joan Jay. 
so um, two different beds so they can take over those beds that's not a problem at all still not dug out my dead rosemary bush the frost seemed to have got to it and it managed to kill it so um, yeah I need to take that out I guess if I take cuttings from someone else's but yeah so plot two with its new poly tunnel it's looking all right. Down the end, I'm sort of um, planning some bits and pieces. Down this back end, I'm planning on getting some pallet collars. I'm going to um, do some sweet potatoes in one with a cold frame over the top and then have some um, salad leaves down the bottom. Where the muck is now, which is ooh, over here, um, I'm going to try and leave that space free for more muck deliveries in the future. But yeah, really pleased with how things are going so far this month. If you could just dry out a little bit, it'd be really helpful. But um, if you've made it this far, thank you very much. Please hit the like and subscribe button if you want to follow along. If not, I'll, well, hopefully I'll see you all back here again around this time next month um, for more updates. But if you've got any questions, drop them in the comments below and I try and answer as many as I can. <laughs>